Jackie Cash and Lori Kilmartin. Jackie Cash and Lori Kilmartin. It's the Jackie and Lori Show. The Jackie and Lori Show. It's the Jackie and Lori Show. The Jackie and Lori Show. Shall we? Don't don't slow down. <laughs> Why are you jumping into this thing? Well, we only have five hours to prepare so that I can go away. We're doing seven podcasts in a week. That's that's like a full day, a working day of conversation. When you add in two 15-minute breaks and an hour for lunch, right? Yeah. Half hour for lunch. That's seven hours of work. This isn't a union gig. You're not going to get those breaks. <laughs> anyway. We don't um, get any money for this. <laughs> we get, there's some money. Not a lot. But, uh, but, and I have this to say, though. I went to the gynecologist this week, and I got to use one of your jokes. You'll be happy to know that I quoted you. I'm excited. Um, because the gynecologist was like, so you're still having your period, and I was like, "Yes." Any if you got any, you got any ETA on that? What do you, you want to <laughs> let me in on that? And she goes, "Well, you could still get pregnant. What are you using for birth control?" And I said, "Of course, <laughs> my age." Thank you very much. <laughs> and then I said, "That's a Lorica Martin joke. Feel see your published works." <laughs> and then um, how did she respond? I didn't get enough laughs for you. Uh, <laughs> that one she laughed against her will, though, which made me laugh, which made me happy. Um, but I will say this is that I was like, if I, if I had a baby at this point, it would first of all be all elbows, right? I mean, I'm, there's just no, marinating in chromosomes. No, 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 no. And what a pain in my ass. Oh, it would be a life changer. I would be so excited. I'd be an aunt. <laughs> I totally want you to have a baby. It would be awesome. Well, you could raise it. Um, <laughs> but I would, I would say this is that, um, she was like, well, you should, she, she, and I didn't say this back to her because she said, well, you should be using condoms. Hmm. And I thought, I already have extra tampons that I'm not using. I'm not buying a box of condoms. Right, right, right. That I'm going to have to give away. Yeah. Uh, don't be ridiculous. To a women's shelter. <laughs> to a women's shelter that desperately needs condoms. Um, um, you, I, do, I do admire how many eggs you were born with. This is unprecedented. And I every did, single month, more are shooting out of you. It's astonishing. Not every month. It's, I mean, that's the thing. It's stopping and starting these days because that's the, how it goes at the very end. But I right. did ask this. And I said, it's ridiculous. I don't know how my body works. I am very sorry. Uh, are there going to be just a bunch of eggs in there that never – like, is it every month? Is that's it, a good question. I would like to know that too. She said that um, the, the eggs there – there will be dormant eggs. Uh, you have dormant eggs, and uh, if <gasps> how you have, dare you? And if you have a hysterectomy, they just don't have any way to get out, right? Because mm-hmm. the the um, not the fallopian tubes, the, the uterus. If you remove the uterus, yeah, it's attached to the fallopian tubes. Like right. If you have a hysterectomy, yeah, um, there's I, no, I don't know anything about my body. As uh, well. There's no vehicle. You, you know, oh. our generation, we weren't taught, and well, we were taught not to ask and try to act and try to. Uh, I, I, for some reason, the trolls have found me on Facebook. Why? Uh, because I posted something John Fugel saying, uh, you know, I, sometimes I'll take a screenshot of a, yeah. of a, of a, of a tweet and post it. And it was a John Fugel saying abortion thing about Jesus. And, um, oh, those, those two <laughs> abortion and Jesus in one tweet, you're going to get some trolls. That's, <laughs> Except uh, for the fact that's that it was an image. It was a, it was catnip image yes. though. And, uh, so they, they, uh, I don't know where they, so I realized that there were people I didn't know tagging other people. Oh, and I was like, sure. oh, so I went on a block fest today. Mm-hmm. I must have blocked a dozen people. It was mm-hmm. good times. And um, there was there was some satisfaction in that. There's also some sort of sadness in, in blocking anybody because I'm like, they're never going to see my stand up now. And, uh, you know, <laughs> it's just like sometimes I, I worry that I don't know how to do sign language. Because there's just a lot of deaf people that are never going to get to hear my cat joke. Whatever. Wait, why? You're blocking deaf people? No, no, because I don't... Uh, you, you, you ever... You ever? I know you're... You speak Spanish, but... Um, <laughs> <laughs> but I don't speak sign language. Right. And, um, and so... And granted, if my stand-up is done on television, it is captioned. Right. But live, I can't... There's... Think of the different timing this, you would have to have. Does this thought have anything to do with Facebook blocking? No. 
Okay, no, I moved so on. you joined you you acted like the way you spoke. It sounded like it it was part of your Facebook conversation. Oh, part of the story of the Facebook story. Yes, it is not. I am so sorry. I moved on to we have. Could we have, you could you blink when you change <laughs> subjects or turn or say your head? Period, yes. Or, uh, pe- or, well, but not talking about my period because yeah, well, I was too just, All right, so. I was. I just did comedy in. Don't, you don't want to hear about my my theory. Have, have you ever wanted to learn another language <laughs> so that you could figure out timing in another language? Uh, yeah, I'd love to to learn German or Spanish or I mean to perform in those languages. Yeah, I mean when I open my comedy club in Luxembourg, the right. Funny Bone in Luxembourg. Yeah, a funny I'd bone? love to be able to. You're gonna go with a Funny Bone. Un bon funny. <laughs> yeah. Why not? Because uh, I, I they can't sue me. It's a different country. The EU does. EU doesn't. You give know, a there's shit. a comedy works all over the place. So um, there's, there's comedy stores all over the place, mm-hmm. and there's sellers too. There's comedy sellers. There's a comedy seller in Dublin. There and it's not a cellar. It's um, it's actually an basement? attic. It's, oh, a, it's an attic. the top. It's the upstairs. Of oh, a weird place called the Metropolitan. Anyway, so I just I've always wanted to know uh, to to do stand up for all the peoples. Yeah, in, they'd be in fun. their own languages because mm-hmm. uh, just think of the the nuance. It would be that you'd write new material. It'd well, be Carmen great. Lynch has two sets. She can she's uh, fluent in Spanish. She can do Spanish shows easily, and she does. Oh, that's cool. I know, that's awesome. Um, All right, now you had a story. What was it? Well, now you're pressuring me. Oh, you took the <laughs> mic away from your mouth to really right so that I could give you the floor. Oh my gosh, I f- I feel like and I'm we in have Congress. new cords, so hopefully they don't squeak. Oh, we do. There you go. Oh, who did that? Kyle Clark. Uh, he's uh, he's oh, our we owe audio you money guy. for that. Thank yeah, you. You can give him some money. He'll take it. Okay. Yeah. Um, what happened to the green cords? They're still sitting right there. Are they going to be recycled? Probably. I'll recycle them if you don't want. If you don't. If you're not going to. We don't even have to recycle them. We can give them to someone who's not going to move around a lot. Oh, some non-squeakers. Yeah. Some non-squeaky talkers. I recycled a lot today. Did you? Yeah. I organized things into little bins. And then I tried to take my VHS tapes, uh, going back to the 80s, because they've all been digitized now. And I have like 60 at least tapes. That's awesome. Um, And so uh, glad you digitized them. Oh, me too. It's like such a. In fact, I'm done with my VCR. If you need it or anyone needs it. I might because uh, my last Comic Standing sets are gone from MySpace. Yeah. I checked my website today. Yeah. So, um,. Uh, so they don't take VHS tapes at the recycling center. So, but there's this place, there's a couple of places where you can mail your stuff in. You have oh, to well. pay to yeah. recycle, but I would rather do that than have them end up in a landfill. I, sure. I don't mind paying 15 or $25 to have all these tapes. For recycled. a big box. Mailbox. Yeah. Yeah. That's yeah. Fine. You just yeah. print out the, uh, the, you weigh it and you print out the, um, the, uh, the shipping, uh, label thing. label. Yeah. And then that's it. Okay. You're good to go. Yeah. And those are all those, it's weird to have all those memories done. And that's, that thing's been weighing on me for like 20 years, that, uh, that <laughs> stack of 80s, VHS tapes. You it know? turns out. And what, now, were they in this closet? And now is this opening up a space? No, they were simple. And then I stored them in the driveway after, after I, <laughs> after I digitized them, but I hadn't gotten to take them to, you're to like, try to recycle they can them. rot outside. Yeah. Until they you got deal with it. all winter. Okay. Yeah. Um, so tonight I did this show in, there's a big house in Sherman Oaks. It's like a recording studio and a house where people, if they're coming out to record albums, they just hang out there with the label. I don't know. I don't know how musicians work. This is the strangest way to work creatively to me, but it's what they do. They'll come out, they hang out and they will live there for a couple months until they record their, their, but they'll write the music together. Yeah, Yeah. 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 I've seen it in movies. I don't know how it works. Well, Could you imagine? No. No, no, no. 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 So it's just such a di- I mean, we're just out every single night and then you go back to your regular life during the day and that's that, you know? Right. And they and just a total you, you've... immersion into, you know, I mean, so anyway, so there's this compound. It's it's a compound like okay. the several front, buildings and Yes, yeah, so one the the address is technically on one street and then the entrance is on the other side and there's tennis courts and there it's a gigantic house and the, the producer yeah. yeah, is has produced a lot of really big names, so he's quite wealthy. And uh, so he has, as one would, a comedy club in his house. 
<laughs> well, that's uh, this proves my point that the one percent doesn't go to comedy clubs. We are brought to them on the backs comedy of elephants. Clubs come to them, yes. And so, um, and it's downstairs, and it's um, it, it's probably it's bigger than the YooHoo room, you know. Yeah. And it was full; it was sold out. Sold out. Did you get paid? Yeah, I got like twenty bucks. It was like a pay what you will. The audience, I think, paid what they could. Or something I did a like pizza that. place the other night. Gave me forty. Nice. Cost me fifteen to park downtown. Oh, before I continue about this, I you know you know the uh, experiment of I'll just park wherever I want to, and yeah. if I get the ticket, I'll eat it. Yeah, I got a ticket last night. You, get, you that'll happen. Yeah, that'll happen. I was seventy five bucks. I haven't looked yet. It was Venice, <laughs> Venice Beach, which oh. might be. Yeah, that'll be seventy five bucks. Not worth it. Yeah, but, but the thing is, is uh, what it's what 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 month are we in? Four, three. Three. All right, just three months in, you've essentially paid seventy five dollars for parking. Right now, that's not bad. It's Venice. It's at night. You know, it's ten o'clock at night. Do I want to be driving around, circling around Venice no. Beach looking for parking? No, I just parked in the lot, and I, it wasn't evident what you had to do. I, I was like, this doesn't feel right, but you know what? I'm the gig's right there. I'm just yeah. gonna walk over and hopefully I almost they won't be didn't out. pay for the gig last night. I al- I almost was like, well, there's no guy to hand. Because it said $8 when you go in, and then I saw the machine. Uh-huh. And so I paid in the machine. The machine was 15 oh. But then I put the thing on the, on the... But it was right across the street from the pizza place. Yeah. And then they gave me money to That's do stand-up nice. comedy. And I got to see um, some very... I got to see some great comics. It was, uh, it was super fun. That's cool. Um, well, yeah. this, this bunker, this downstairs thing, I mean, it's, it's kind of like, you're like, well, if there's a fire, there's no, we're not all getting out. <laughs> no, but I don't think the rich are allowed. There's no fires. <laughs> they have not sprinklers. at mansions. Yeah. They don't have, they have, uh, they, yeah. Yeah. So it's cool. It's, uh, it, it's, but it's a secret comedy club. Like they you're only invited in the audience is a mailing list and they have to be invited to come. And who was there? Was it the rich? Um, or was I it you tell? They it? were young. Okay. I think. I think it's like record company kind of. Oh, you know, oh like, I don't. I don't know that world, and I don't know who they talk to. Right, but, but they did. They look like just a pile of hang- haircuts that were no, like you're working in the derisive music. comments to my audience tonight are very hurtful. Okay, <laughs> very hurtful. They really enjoyed my work, and <laughs> which is they're fans what makes of mine. them the greatest crowd. They're fans of and mine, obviously good people. Yeah, they're obviously fans of good mine. people. All right. Um. Yeah. So that was that, and and uh, so tonight is a first night. I left my kid alone at night while I went to do a spot. Right, because there was no one to no one to be. Right, that's right. So it's so peaceful here. Yeah. Oh my god, I've done. I've got so many little chores done around the house. Things where like I just don't want to be near her, so I just get out. Yeah, and th- you know things pile up and stuff like that. Yeah. And I, it's just been it's been great. It'll be over in a day She's and a half. But anyway, so my kid uh, and he's loving it too. Yeah, we're really. <laughs> We're Having really a, different people. You're a different family. Yes. Yes. But, um, How's so your sister, you talked to her. No. Okay. <laughs> but she's got two floors, you know, like, and my mom can't get up the stairs so they can all run away from her and just leave her trapped. <laughs> right. Right. They can all hide, da- hide yeah. upstairs if they need to. So he, um, he did okay with that. All the lights were on in the house. Every sure. single light was on in the house. Well, when I came back in and, um, uh, but he did not want me to come out here to do this <laughs> podcast. <laughs> so I was getting the stink eye being ordered to rub his back. And then all of a sudden he had a stomach ache and needed medicine. It was like, can I just get the fuck out? I have to right. do a bunch of podcasts. Apparently when I said to him, I'm not working this week, he thought it meant I wasn't doing anything at night because right. I meant, you, you meant know. day job. Yeah. yeah. To me, and comedy is, he, is like is oxygen. That's right. I, mean, right. That's I didn't say work. I wasn't breathing this week. Right, right. You're not going to be taking any food in. Yeah. Uh, what did, uh, so, and he has this week off of school or? No, last week. Last week. It's off. neat okay. how it didn't sync up. Yeah. It is kind of nice. <laughs> it's it, just it, perfect. It actually, it works quite nicely. Yeah. Um, well, so is he going to sleep or is he just going to play? He just should be up. asleep. Okay. He should be, he's, he, he's pretty sleepy. Okay. So he should, he should be out. Nice. Yeah. And, uh, but I, I've been like a stay at home mom this, this week. Yeah. You just know, trying to make sure he gets to school and back, right? To school, pick him up. I, I helped him with his homework, helped him with his math. How'd that work out? Uh, good. You know, he, there was a, it's a worksheet and they're doing tips and taxes and withholding and markdowns. And he, 
I guess didn't it's all realize some of them are stuff or? yeah. It's some of them a tip and a tax is obviously adding to the sum and yeah. a, and a markdown is taking away and okay. you don't know what I don't know that well the, those are, those are new those are all very yes, different words yes, yeah, yeah yeah I mean yeah. it's it's good stuff to I got an email today know. from uh, the guy who does the audio on the Dork Forest Patrick Brady mm-hmm. and um, he had he had lost his job and but he's a uh, does he want that information out well he. Sure, what the hell? Okay. Um, hey, Pat, you listen? Anyway, so, um, but he, yeah, make a note of the time, I guess. It's, uh, so, but he got a new job. Okay. Patrick Brady got a new job, and he said, I said, what, what is it? And he sent me a paragraph of words that are so technical that I don't know what they are. Mm. They're, they're programming and editing mm. and all this stuff that he does. He's a very successful young man. Right, right. And um, I am waiting any minute for him to be bored of oh, editing The Dork quit. Forest. Right. Yes. Um, so. Hello, this is Amy Mann. And I'm Ted Leo. And we have a podcast called The Art of Process. We've been lucky enough over the past year to talk to some of our friends and acquaintances from across the creative spectrum to find out how they actually work. And so I have to write material that makes sense and makes people laugh. I also have to think about what I'm saying to people. If I kick your ass, I'll make you famous. The fight to get LGBTQ representation in the show. Mm-hmm. We weirdly don't know as many musicians as you would expect. I really just became a political speechwriter by by accident of realizing that I have accidentally uh, pulled my pants down. <laughs> Listen and subscribe at MaximumFun.org or wherever you get your podcast. It's like if the guinea pig was complicit in helping the scientist. I, Alex Cole came over. And, oh, uh, to look he, into a green screen? Yeah, yeah. So he told me told me what stuff to buy. And I had a mic that I, I was going to set something up for my kid and I yeah. didn't. So... We kind of set it up, and I've just been practicing. And uh, you know, this—it's—I don't like looking at my face because I here's—I don't do you, do you, I don't, you maybe you guys didn't have this, but <laughs> so when I was a kid, there was this magazine that I kept for years, and it it rated women's faces like like experts on beauty jesus age christ and they you numbered kept them a magazine it numbered their faces so why like, wouldn't it why wouldn't it what the, fucking maybe magazine the only was 10 this? was sophia loren it was a special beauty magazine i bought at long's drugstore in countrywood which is a shopping oh, center right where, where i lived and it, it's it, and magazine, it, it has haunted you for, oh yeah for oh yeah 50 years oh yeah <laughs> because i studied uh, all the makeup artists that would say well her nose is too long and, oh is like nose- christy brinkley was like an eight. Oh my god! You know, Brooke Shields was like a nine. Like, and then then they took some people down to sixes and stuff like that. That weren't wow. that weren't models. That were just like <laughs> that actresses. weren't famous and couldn't sue them. Well, yeah. Well, no, 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 they were like like Meredith Bernie Baxter was like. You know, oh god! <laughs> you know, she wasn't a model, but you know, they and they would tell you why her face wasn't right. Well, and I just was like, oh, I guess this is. Because it's sold on the same newsstand as Time Magazine and Newsweek. So, of right. course, this is factual. <laughs> this is science. Oh, you fell down a rabbit hole of, of what no was right. No one stopped me. No, no. My mom didn't oh, no. come Let's in and go, what do you... Elijah back here. Uh, yeah. <laughs> no one stopped me and said, hey, what the fuck are you reading? And yeah. this is bullshit. And these people are full of shit. And everyone looks great. And who fucking cares if you yes. have a long nose or whatever. But it's... It's there's a template in my head, and so whenever I look at my that face, remains. I'm like, oh, and I I just start grading everything. It's really hard to, uh, you know, do that kind of you know web series sort of thing for me. But I kind of want to see if I can just get this done. It's it's more, you know, the content, I guess. But uh, I, I I admire everyone that can just fucking put a a, a video a camera in front of their face and take a a bunch of video and put it online, you know? Right, without... Well, you know what Snapchat does? Because <laughs> some, sometimes, you know, I do that hotel art thing. Mm-hmm. And if I if I record it, and sometimes I'm exhausted, there's... And it, uh, if you don't know this, I'm about to blow your mind, but almost everyone does. Uh, you can make swipe to the left, and it literally will take like 15 years off your face. Right. Yeah, it just um it it just changes the exposure. Mm-hmm. And um and I look much less tired. So I can only recommend <laughs> just doing it on why don't you just do it on Snapchat? Cuz you only want it to be a minute, right? Yeah, but I want to be able to edit it. <laughs> that, and oh, I Well, you could still edit it, but um 
Um, I'm a huge fan. <laughs> does of, the Snapchat disappear? No, you can download it. Like, the, you know, I did the video for Max Fun for the Max Fun Drive. Yeah. Max Fun, MaximumFun.org slash donate, you guys. Please, guys. Anyway. <laughs> Please make us look good. Okay. Right, right. Please. And We're so begging I, you. I made that video for the game day thing. And I did that with Snapchat. And then I added, the hearts were just a frame that you could just add. You know what my video said? What? I said, I. Oh, did you make one? Yeah. Because okay. the video is who you'd want to play yeah, a parlor yeah. game with. And I said, Ted Bundy, because maybe he'd kill me before the game started. <laughs> and I did Marie Antoinette because I wanted to play guillotine, mm. which is a card game. Yeah. Anyway. Um, mm-hmm. I, I saw I was I kept an open mind and I was like, no, did I'm you not playing card did games. you keep an open? mind? Yes, I is did. Open? I did. I want to name the thing that uh, Lori keeps an open mind <laughs> noted. And uh, so I just want to know how much time we've done. Okay, so we are one sixth of the way done <laughs> with what we're doing tonight. Not tonight. Yes, yeah, tonight that... we're doing we're doing six uh, sets of twenty minutes, basically oh. six twenties. Well, do you want to do you want to hear my new bit that's too long? Anyway, uh, speaking of doing six sets of twenty minutes, oh. I did both of my new bits last night, and mm-hmm. it was kind of great because my gender bit about th- the things about the the new to me words of gender mm-hmm. it's a nerve-wracking thing to do because you don't want to offend and you mm-hmm. and you want it to and you want to punchline it up and it was great because the audience at this pizza place the proof rock proof rock pizza uh I've downtown done it, but i can't visualize it right it's now. downtown in some oh, janky neighborhood. yes 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 yeah and the pizza's really good right but um so I did it, and the audience was full of uh, some of the politest people in the world, but a nice mix of of young and uh, older, and um, and it worked. It worked. It's got you know. I think they they both have so much work. Mm-hmm. the The other one is sort of a dick joke about getting laid. Um, uh, Sometimes wh- you need those, Jackie. Well, it's a one night stand bit that uh, I think has potential that I sort of have been working on the premise for a while but and came up with punchlines on the live at in the Boise mm-hmm. f- comedy festival um in the live dork forest mm-hmm. but um so they both you know you do them and then the the timing is off the words you forget a word you say too many words mm-hmm. and that's where I'm at with both of them but I'm pretty happy pretty solid with both of them I don't know that I'm going to do the axel joke cuz axel it's not really <laughs> Nobody cares about the movie Axel. Is what I think I've realized is that I have to explain what the movie Axel is. Though somebody did. Well, you can. You can. You can just explain the whole thing. Right. You know. I do, I have before, and I will again. <laughs> and 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 it's and it's fine. I just there's three or four beats, but I've I feel like I've told the story, the Axel thing here. I've told it on the Dork Forest. I, I know I've on, tuned it out here. Right. So. I know. And uh, so I I believe i think my pitch for the movie axel is done okay i think i think it'll be fine uh i had comedy brunch the other day you didn't come even though you weren't working dude i have so many things i have to do no i know it i know i you didn't want to spend a couple hours just hanging no it was a long time actually because after i drop off my kid and swim and then from the pickup time it's not a long it's not a long amount of time it, like if you want to do a couple don't things you swim and then before rest. you drop them off no or? i drop them off at eight and then i swim from eight to like nine ish i drop okay. them off at seven forty. okay and and, then, wh- and so what are you going to do next week when you have to go to work i'll do the same thing i'll um i get out at eight uh, get out of the pool at nine and i have to be at work at nine thirty. i show up with wet hair and i oh, brush okay. it as i walk across the crosswalk from the parking garage to warner brothers yes and put on makeup as I'm walking, yes. you know, it's, but yeah, yeah. I, get, I get my workout in. Okay. I was thinking we should, to try to get advertising, we yeah. should contact, we should have Max Fun contact people or things that we already use. You, and, instead of like having to pretend that we, we I have eat a lot berries. of silence to this. I have so much silence for this. Wait You want to do ads? I'm just saying. I, I would, don't. 
I would easily talk for five minutes about my monofin if the monofin... Nobody, fin... first of all, wants to hear you talk about your monofin for Are five minutes. Are you serious? I'm more than serious because it's an ad. And I do ads on the Dork Forest, and I try to keep them to less than one minute. Because you know why people tune in to podcasts? To, to hear, hear me about... and you talk. Not to hear some, hey, by the way, there's a there's a perfume company That's that you're going to... I don't wear perfume, but you know what? I fucking love my monofin. Why, why, 10 no. more seconds of that, ka -ching? Come on. What is a monofin? I'm glad what you asked, it? Kyle. I don't want to know. I'm not happy you asked, <laughs> Kyle, but we do have time to fill. So tell me what a mono. Wait, you know what? It is exa yes, that's exactly what it tale. is. That's exactly what it is. Because you told me what this fucking thing was, and I've completely blocked it because it's dumb. It's no. not dumb. I'm, not, I'm happy for you. I'm not going to say, would you want to be on the dork for us, by the way, to talk about swimming? Because no. I'll give you an hour. You can and, fucking and talk to me. And another hour of conversation with you? Are you fucking mad? This is where it ends, you guys. This is how it ends. <laughs> It's two fins that are stuck together, <laughs> right? And you can do you you can do dolphin kick with them. But right. the, look at Kyle when you see the that. fun part is that you're underwater swimming like a fishy, mm -hmm. and you can't underestimate how fun it is to just have that feeling every single morning. You're not you're not what you weigh, you know. You're and when you're in the water, you weigh nothing, right? So you feel just as light as possible, and you're using your entire body to swim like this, mm -hmm. but. Um, it's just fun. It's tiring and I and my muscles are growing and I get exhausted, but it's fun. Underwater kicking like a fish is fucking fun. It sounds like a nightmare. And I do uh, 600 I, meters of it every morning. And I'm happy for you. Thank you. All right. Uh, I don't want any part of it. Now, here's the thing. <laughs> here's the thing about advertising. It is so much work to do those ads that I do for the Dork Forest. And I make just enough money. Where for it to be it. irritating mm. if I were to, to stop doing it. I see. Um, and uh, I, don't, I don't know how to turn down that amount of money. Because I don't make... Well, the Dork Forest makes more money than this does. And well, it ought. <laughs> well, 13 wow. 13 years later, yeah. it ought to. Um, but it still does not make a great deal of money, right? Mm -hmm. I mean, I have a... a, 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 a I don't have a Patreon, but mm -hmm. I have a donate button. Right. I, I have an Amazon banner thing to order through Amazon and get a kickback. Yeah. And then I do the I do two ads per show. But the, sh the ads often have to be mid-roll. And All Things Comedy got me some weird ad that I had to break it into... It was one ad. But I had to break it into two parts. I had to do an intro to the ad, a shout out to it in the beginning, and then a mid roll in the middle. So I might be done with all things comedy ads. This is what I money. would say to the monofin people. I won't, I won't <laughs> name the company because they haven't paid us. I'd be like, listen, I'm just going to talk from my heart <laughs> about my monofin. You're doing that right now. Yeah, what I mean, I'm happy to do it again. You think we don't repeat stories on this fucking thing? Uh, we do repeat stories on yes. this fucking thing. Anyway, so I'm at the breakfast that you don't go to. I didn't and, go to because right. I and I met two new. I'm st I'm, I'm I'm in the middle of a sentence here, okay. but it's good. Uh, so well, uh, we, one of your sent your first sentence was an accusation. I had to defend myself, right? In other news, uh, so I meet uh, Carmen Morales brings two comics who just moved here like a month ago, mm -hmm. and uh, so I meet two young men. That look like they're hilarious. That's what we need. Two more 29-year-old, hilarious, relatively good-looking uh, white dudes. And, There's so uh, many funny fucking comics now. There's so many funny comics. It was... It's uh, kind of... It's, I mean, it is awesome. It's But it is much. kind of exhausting. They're like so... They're every... So they seem decent dudes, good, too. Good, nice people. Yeah, good people. It was all... All the We're, things. Who are you going to hate in this fucking business now? There's you no can't, room. You, you know what? Sometimes you get by on your hatred of your enemies. <laughs> and if everyone's a cool guy or everyone's a nice lady and they all write great jokes, who are you going to fucking hate? That's who are you going to climb over mentally in your head? Well, there's always Twitter. <laughs> uh, so you can always find some banana head just losing their shit on Twitter. But um, but they were, they were really good. Uh, one of them was a guy named Drew who works with um, the liberal redneck guy, Trey... Oh, yeah. I was just looking at his stuff tonight. Yeah. Trey, Trey Crowder. Crowder. That's right. it. And this guy's name, I think, is Drew Morgan. What's he do, what's he do for him? Uh, well, he's just straight comic, but I think he opens, uh, he, they, they do the road together. 
I think he features for I don't know Trey Crowder's story really. I was just about to delve into it because he. I used to wa- I used to watch his videos a couple of years ago. Cause yeah, he was a YouTube guy, but also a stand up. And his YouTube. What was- came first, stand up or the YouTube? I don't know. That affects my opinion oh, dramatically. Wait a minute, uh, Kyle just made a fist motion, yeah, and. Are you guys, are you with Lori? Uh, here's, Chicken or the egg, Jackie? Uh, I'm going to eat both of them. It's going to be a genocide of all poultry. Uh, here's the thing. I have, uh, yes, and I have this to say is that um, anyone can do stand-up. I don't care. Uh, mm-hmm. it, it, does, it doesn't matter as long as, and the thing is, if he did the YouTube thing and there is slack that people are willing to cut if you are famous on YouTube and start doing stand-up. But it's much like, remember when Seinfeld went back to doing stand-up? And he would get this, he'd get the break because he was Jerry Seinfeld. Mm-hmm. But after about 10, 12 minutes, they would be as patient as they could. He said, I, saw, I read an interview one time that said that they would last somewhere between 8 and 12 minutes that first year. And then they were like, no, seriously, do you have any jokes? And he, he had he to would struggle for 8 minutes? He would struggle for, he said that it would take him sometimes 8 minutes. To like they, wow. he could milk their goodwill. Ouch! That is painful. It's brutal. But he was remember he was doing forty five to sixties, right? Yikes! And uh, so, but he and but he said he could milk. You know, and I don't know if he put it like this, but he was like, I could milk the goodwill, right, from being Jerry Seinfeld for that, and that I think is what YouTube people. But uh, I saw Trey Crowder at some festival. I think it was in Birmingham. Mm-hmm. No, not Birmingham, Orlando. Mm-hmm. The Orlando Festival, and um, he was funny. It was, but okay. his YouTube videos were essentially him in wherever he's from, some uh, some rural, yeah. very southern town, right? And he would break down something that had just happened in the in the in the news, right? And say, you know, just because I got this accent, and just because you know I'm a good old boy like you are. Uh, but I'm not a monster and I'm not an idiot. Yeah. And, uh, I can, I like to hunt and fish and drive a truck and wear cowboy boots and it doesn't make me, uh, not an, um, you know, an American in favor of the constitution. And so it was both articulate Mm -hmm. and sort of that. So we do sort of funny rants about, about politics and, and they were. That's, yeah, a, and that's were, a smart hook, especially was, if he yes. believes it and it's true. That's really yeah, good. It was a really smart hook. And then, yeah. of course, he met some charlatan who had made him come here. He was doing perfectly fine. Oh. He could have stayed <laughs> oh, home. Some management? Yeah, yeah. Somebody just said, if you move to Los Angeles, you'll be famous. You'll be hugely successful in 10 years. That's the end of that <laughs> sentence that nobody <laughs> tells no anyone. It. <laughs> nobody, you ha- it takes 10 years. Yeah. And so I I had somebody ask me in Duluth. I, I might have told you this story. This could be a story that we heard already. Is uh, I met a bunch of actors in Duluth when I opened for Maria last time. Yeah. And they were like, should we move to Los Angeles? And I said, well, it's going to take 10 years anyway. You can either move when you're young and not ready, like quality of art wise, or you could move when you're quality of art wise ready, but you're too old because they're bored. Um, I don't know. And in I, I both would, cases, it'll too, take it, 10 years. Is it too old a thing? No, it isn't. But is, is too, is, is not talented enough a thing? Yeah. Except for if you come and, and work, ply your trade here mm-hmm. while you, while that 10 years goes by. Right. You could also meet people. Do you so want that? that pe- yeah. Oh, yeah, it's just going to be. Pe- so you, you want to move to L.A. to meet people or do comedy? What well, you, to, what, to, well, to meet people, people really. OK, it's I mean, the thing is, is you want to continue to work on your art, whatever you do. Mm-hmm. It doesn't apply to you, Kyle. You grew up here. So uh, <laughs> but the thing is, is um, if you if you start doing stand up comedy, let's say in Chicago or in Indianapolis and um, and you're like, should I should I stay in Indianapolis Become a road headliner and then move here. Yeah. Um, every time, yes. Every time, yes. It's um, I'd say either way. I mean, the thing is, is it's it's I think it's I think it's a choice of what you want to do. Do you want to? Yeah. Well, if you want to act, you move to Los Angeles. If you want to do the road more, you move to New York because it's all squashed on top of each other. But you could also move to Minneapolis or Chicago, where six hours from both of those places 
is 45 weeks of work. I so. say, yeah, you start in one of those smaller cities, including like Minneapolis. I or mean, San like a medium Francisco. size. You, or, no, or, unless you're a millionaire. Seattle. No, you can't. Well, now, yes. Even Oakland's unaffordable. No, not the Bay Area. Or New York. Unless you have people there. But uh, so start in a medium size. Just get just get the kinks out. You have five years of sucking ahead of you. You might as well end that quickly, <laughs> you know, under the radar. And then I would say move to New York because um, there's more there's more, ro- there's more road work. Well, I guess so, but you moved to New York to live in New York and go up on stage six nights a week. I tried to... Every single night, uh, multiple spots. Well, it was not possible in 1989 when I moved to New York. Uh, I moved to New York and I could not But how long stage. did you live there? Uh, three months. Okay, you I didn't couldn't... give it long enough. No well, one even thought you were going to stay. If you, if you, you probably had a look in your eye like, I'm getting the fuck out of here. Honestly, I barely got anything in my first year. Well, it was all the thing is, stuff. is what you just said right. was move to New York because you'll go up six nights a week. Uh, you'll and get there. What you're right. going to you get have there. To, right. Yes, you have yes. to tell people it's going to take a year or two years wherever you go. People, in, yeah. I mean, when you move to New York, you 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 spend six months just showing up everywhere, so people go, "Oh, you live here." Well, and in 1989, there was there wasn't the scene that there is now. There was nowhere to bark. In 1989, in New York City, yeah, there was um, every gig that I could try to get to do was a bringer. I knew mm. two people. There were bringers in '89. There, yeah, Ooh. yeah, and I and I was that at Stand Up New York. Was that uh, it was it was at uh, it was at uh, Carrie Hoffman, uh, Rodney Danger. It was at Dangerfield. Really? It was at the Boston Comedy Club, oh. and it was those are the, and the um, the thing up uh, Upper East Side. The strip, yeah, and the strip. Those mm. are the three I tried. Okay, and um, and I couldn't even get into Caroline's. I was like, "Can I try to get an audition?" I I couldn't, you know, I couldn't get anyone to. You were also even... just two years in, too, right? Two or three years in. No, well, eighty four, and but the thing is, it didn't really matter, right? Because I, I might as well have been brand new. Okay, but it was because um, in nineteen eighty four, eighty five, I did stand up every night for eight months until the club burned down. Which was a lot, which was a lot like doing stand up. If you think about it, eight months times 30. Um, 240. Yeah, that's uh, sure. I'm doing a lot of my uh, son's math problems for him, so <laughs> I'm all over this shit. Right. So that's, I mean, that's literally, um, that's several years of open mic. And I was, and I got to do 10 minute sets. That's great. Which is insane. Yeah. Because I didn't have 10 minutes. Uh, but, Sam Kinison's brother Bill didn't care, mm-hmm. uh, which is why it burned down. And oh. um, <laughs> he didn't have a sprinkler system. Uh, well, <laughs> thank God it was insured. No. Let's just go with that. <laughs> anyway, I got a one point eight that semester, and mm-hmm. then um, and then I moved on with my life. But the thing is, is is so if whenever you move anywhere, you have to reinvent the wheel. But I say right now, if you, if you had like, if, if you had what I had, which is the equivalent of like three years of stand up experience. Right. Mm-hmm. And you move to New York city. Now you would, you could get barking sets. You could get open mic sets at, at bars and coffee yeah. shops and, mm-hmm. and Queens and Brooklyn and, and just a little shit. Yeah. Holes. And up, if, if you were to approach a coffee shop and say you want to do stand up comedy, they're probably way more interested in it now than they would have been in 1985. Or well, and there's somebody or, you know, running an open mic there already. Yeah. You know, there, there, there's a comedy bureau <laughs> yeah. uh, of New York, uh, yeah. I'm sure. And there, it's, I, the I think it's something called ba- Bad Slava. I don't know if it's. Yeah. That's the original one? Oh, okay. Well, okay. I just use it for New York and I use Bureau for LA, of course. Okay, yeah. And the, um, but there was a, yeah, there was a New York version of the, Bureau, of the it was like the comedian's co- comic or the no, comics, comic. comics comic. Yeah. Oh, okay. And, um, but so there's a place to go up open mic wise mm-hmm. or to hang out that you don't have to buy two drinks and, right. and, and, and pay a cover. Yeah. You know, because that was the other thing in 89 is that if I wanted to hang out, I had to pay the cover. Oh, my God. So the whole thing was a Fuck fucking ridiculous. disaster. Yes. And um, and I remember when I decided to, to leave New York. I First of all, I hated that fucking song. If you can make it here, you can make it anywhere. Right. Yeah. Couldn't listen to it for decades. <laughs> anyway, uh, still not Where a did you live? Fan. I lived in Weehawken. 
Uh, okay. And I worked at uh, an insurance company, attractively called, still exists, Chubb Life. Oh yeah, I remember that. And it was in yes. it was in the finance district. I would sure. take the path to the World Trade Center. I'd walk to the Chubb you think Life. That, you think the airplanes were trying to get at Chubb? Yeah. Yeah, I do. And I think uh, the woman who uh, was my boss at the time, who every day showed up reeking of alcohol, drunk like a skunk at 830 in the morning. And and I remember the, there was the first Friday that I worked there. Mm -hmm. uh, she We were in a meeting. I was taking notes for her. And uh, she had a giant hole in her pantyhose. And it was, this is like working girl times, right? And I was like, <laughs> I'm going to wear sneakers and then I'm going to yeah, put yeah. on some pumps. And I didn't own pumps. I own flats. Yeah. Anyway, so um, the, uh, but so she had this and that was the last straw. And I told the guy, I said, hey, my mom has cancer. I have to go back to Wisconsin. <laughs> That's right. And he said, well, here's an idea. And I said, I, I can give you another week, but I got to go. home, And I'm, I'm not going to stay. I, no, I think that was at two weeks. That was yeah. I had, it, and I said, "Oh yeah," I said I didn't give him any notice. I said I'm just going to go home, and um, and he goes, "Here's an idea. Uh, why don't you go back to Wisconsin? We'll pay you for two weeks to go back to Wisconsin, then come home, sort of regroup." I know it's hard here. And he did not believe me that my mother had cancer. <laughs> and uh, and uh, I was like, oh, no, she's going to need me. She's really going to. And then I killed my dead mother because uh, I didn't kill my stepmother. I, I killed. I, you got to kill. Yeah. If you're going to in a story, if you're going to kill somebody, kill the dead person. Yeah. Who's already yeah, dead. yeah. Yeah. Nope, yeah. Yeah. There's no bad karma there. Right. I'm not I'm not here to cause troubles. Right. So um, anyway. But I do think that if, if you want to move to Los Angeles or New York, New York is a better place now to move just to do straight stand-up. Oh, my God. It's but bananas. I'll tell you something. Los Angeles, Maria used to do, short-lived, I don't know if she ever put it on any of her published things, but she said the difference between New York and L.A. is that in New York, there's nowhere to cry. You, <laughs> in Los Angeles, you have your car. In, yeah. in New York, you got to buy a hat and <laughs> get like a visor that you roll down. It was a very funny bit. Anyway, I don't know what you ever did anything with it. But, um, you do have to go all the way home to cry. Right. You got to go all the way home in New York to cry. I mean, I mean, you could cry and no one will give a shit in New York, but it is, it's rude. So um, you just want to wanna wait. But um, yeah, so, so LA, when I moved here, I was psyched to move here because mm -hmm. I, I really, I knew a bunch of comics, but I had someone I could live with mm -hmm. that was willing to share her studio apartment with me for three years. And luckily, I did the road about 30 weeks a year. And she, well, I think it was 20 by the last year, which is why she handed me an OXO kitchen set and said, we're in our 30s. Get your own apartment. <laughs> mm -hmm. And then Karen Rontowski found me an apartment right across the street from her apartment. Yeah, cool. And it was, uh, it was a great story. And uh, a clock eater. I bet you we're at 30. I've heard it before. What? Comic of the week. Oh, right. Wait. Oh, man. You guys you, got you a lot to look forward to right now. <laughs> <laughs> well, uh, do the comic of the week. Which one are we doing? Oh, Andy Iwancio. Andy Iwancio, Seattle comic. I just right? worked with her, yes, in Seattle. I made you pronounce her name. Uh, I'm so sorry. <laughs> no, that's so, okay. Yeah. Um, I, I, I texted Amy. I'm like, Andy and her last name's got a lot of vowels. <laughs> <laughs> Amy Miller. Yeah, I told yeah. you about her. Yeah, so Andy, she's a Seattle comic, though. And she's, uh, you just worked with her at, at Seattle Laughs? Yeah, she did at least two of the shows that oh, I was Oh, that's awesome. On. Yeah, that You was, know, I met her when funny. I was there. And uh, uh, I just remembered who she was. Oh, she's really? Short, oh, yeah, okay. I think, right? If, I, I don't remember. Yeah. Anyway. Anyway, she was very funny because <laughs> as soon as I, uh, you said her last name, I was like, I could picture. So <laughs> I could picture the stand-up. Yeah, so check out Andy. What is it? She, Andy Iwancio? At? Is she the funny Andy? What's her uh, Twitter handle? Andy How do you okay. spell Iwancio? I-W-I-W-A-N-C-I-O. Mm -hmm. There you go. It's and more than half vowels. I was right. <laughs> and uh, best of luck. And, and get out to see her if you're in Seattle. Super fun. Now, mm -hmm. let's talk about Max Fun for a second. And let's hear a thing. This will be the second drop, you guys. Wait, we're doing two in a row like that? No, I'm going to put the other one. Uh, the back. Max Fun earlier. Great. Okay. Oh, good. 
I'm bailiff Jesse Thorne, and justice is within your reach. My mom refuses to take my phone calls. My boyfriend says I should take our cats with me to graduate school, but I think he should keep them. In the court of Judge John Hodgman, justice rules. My partner's board game collection is out of control. My sister won't stop stealing my clothes. I'm Judge John Hodgman. I'm tough, but fair. fair. I'll bring you justice, and I'm only a click away. Tipping. Automotive etiquette. Siblings. Roommates. If you've got a case, go to MaximumFun.org slash JJHO. Judge John Hodgman is tough, but fair. fair. Subscribe to the podcast today. Judge John Hodgman rules. That is all. And we're back. Did you oh miss my us? God. I know we're, but we're at like forty-two, forty-three, 43 now. Okay, so we're two, we're two sixths, one third done of our obligation. And I, wow, she is doing a lot of math. Yeah, with I the do kid. a lot of fractions. You do a lot of percentage now. as well. It's all of a sudden you're gonna uh, you're, you're gonna be really good at math by the time he's done with seventh grade. <laughs> <laughs> um, all right, so. There's well, things I want to save for okay. the next one. Well, wait. A, uh, so the uh, I just realized when my with my I never uh, the word talented you had used it earlier. If someone's talented or untalented, that is actually like they've done studies. That's just not a word anyone should use because <laughs> what it would it like if you tell someone they're talented, it's nothing that they did or earned or can replicate. It's just like a what? What do you mean? Like I'm tall. I'm this. I'm that. Like it's nothing you can. Improve. You were born with it, so the, and there's nothing you can improve with it. Yes. Okay. So, like, my kid draws really well, mm-hmm. and I he's probably a talented artist, but I don't tell him that. I just said, wow, you're working really hard on that arm. I can really see it coming along. You know, he's working on different body parts. And so I just try to emphasize how hard he's working on something. Right. I, I have, in an effort to get him to swim, which he doesn't like swimming probably because I like it, I've, I've <laughs> said, you know, you're physically gifted in that, it, it, you know, of all the sports – in the world, swimming might be the best one for you because you're you're tall and you've got long limbs and you're you know whatever right. etc. I mean the thing you can be talented at stuff, but the thing is is you're not gonna, it's not going to go anywhere. It's not unless a good you work compliment. It. You know it, it leaves the person sort of. Is this a new thing that I'm not supposed to call people talented? No, you're not you read, supposed to call people. Do you talented. read an article? Yes, you read a powerful. I article. read a lot of studies every day, Jackie. <laughs> So, Why wouldn't you? Um, because I do. I, I write monologue jokes. No, and we, I sometimes know. we have to come up with evergreen topic right. topics that aren't, you know, the Mueller report or whatever. Right. Um, but yeah, no, it's it's not a good thing to say to a kid that they're talented. I don't know any children. I'm good. Or even to somebody, somebody <laughs> like a young comic. I no, I I I don't think I tell anyone they're talented. <laughs> I don't think you do either. I don't know why I was worried about it. Why were you worried about it? But <laughs> I will keep it in mind if I'm ever tempted to say, "Hey, you're really good at that." No, good is different. To say that someone's good at something, talented is something. It's like a a an innate quality that that the person just goes. It, it almost freezes you because it's not a thing you can work on or a, or um where you can look back on with pride. It's just something that someone's observing about you versus that's weird. You're really it, funny. You make people laugh. It's like, Oh yeah, I see that thing. I do. I can, but I the can. weird thing is, is, is like if, if you have a natural talent, that doesn't mean that you're going to, you know, it's, it's a lot like not living up to your potential mm-hmm. because your natural talent's not going to, it's going to atrophy and it's not going to go anywhere unless you work on it. And unless right. you work that muscle, like, um, I, I actually, I'm actually quite a good artist, but I don't work on it at all. Mm -hmm. Uh, Allow me (laughs) to do my own home. Uh, Pretty good drawer, you guys. I can draw real good, Mm -hmm. real good, real good. I got a talent for drawing, but I'm not very good at it because I haven't worked on it in decades. Uh, I was an okay trumpet player. Um, but I, I don't, is it I have every a natural trumpet player, just an okay trumpet player? No, uh, there's, uh, there's, I had real good embouchure, I was told. What? I had a real good embouchure. I mean, I'm what's not, that mean? Uh, it's uh, how you blow on the horn. Oh, okay. It's it's uh, you, you're the way you, your mouth sets on the mouthpiece. Oh, and, yeah. Um, see, that's something you you can't learn. I'm sure it's something you. you I think you can, you but I mean, if if you have a a, a, a natural gift for it, you affinity. Um, you have an affinity. A natural for affinity it. for it. Um, you, you maybe can get very good at it. Yeah. If you still work on it, this right. type of thing. Mm-hmm. Anyway, so. 
That's interesting. I just, all I know is that every three to six months, I meet 10 new comics and four of them are amazing. <laughs> and welcome to Los Angeles is all you can say to them. Welcome to Los Angeles. I, and I hope it all works out, you know? Well, there's a, there's a lot of comics where I, you just see they really put in a, the work and it shows. And then there's like, I remember I saw Aziz, I think the first or second time he'd ever been on stage as a stand-up. Mm-hmm. And I was like, oh, this guy's going to be really really good because he's super likable and he's different. He had a little, you know, he's Indian. He has a Southern accent. There's a lot of things where you just can't stop watching him Mm -hmm. because he's so unique looking and as a performer, as opposed to everyone else you saw in the lineup that night. Right. Right. And he's got kind of like that scratchy voice, which is. So the second time he went up, you saw him. I was hosting. He was, he did a bringer at the cellar and I was hosting. Okay. And, I he always stuck out in my mind before he became you know what he was but, right and 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 you saw him as he developed too I'm sure right like yeah I mean I his... didn't watch him too much but I mean um he he got laughs very early on but he was also just a very striking persona on stage mm-hmm. and uh, I think they all have stage presence now and when I say they I mean all the all all the young comics all the new comics. They're all born with a camera in their face, and they all have pretty good stage presence hmm. from the get. And then it's just weeding out the people who can write comedy and the people who can't. Um, and a lot, and, and and within that, there's a thousand different layers of how much work you're willing to do, and and how, how much hanging out you're willing to do, yeah, and how much people, you can do. I don't know. I don't think. So. I don't think being comfortable in front of a camera means you're comfortable on stage in front of people that are strangers. I have not, I have not seen bad stage presence at open mics in a thought. No, yeah. I, the confidence of these, of, of, of open mic kids, uh, I is, is amazing to me. Are you seeing on, you so. you, all right. Well, I mean, I'm, I'm not saying it doesn't exist, but I'm saying that, that for most of the people that I've seen, well, you're probably not seeing pure open micers. You're probably people seeing people have done it some time, a couple of years in their scene and came to Los Angeles. No, no. I, well, every time I go to Minneapolis, I, I close the open mic. Yeah. And so that's a Monday and that's 26 comics. And the first 13 are, are new. So, and, and you're watching all of them. No. What did, okay. <laughs> Jackie, uh, the admit two it. of you, the two of you are uh, admit it. saying you overstated. No, people suck. You were right. I'm so sorry for saying <laughs> that uh that that this is a thing that is is Why a are you the thing. optimist tonight? It's uh, <laughs> just tonight? What just happened? <laughs> so where we break up, you guys. And uh where are we at? Where are we at? We got 10 more minutes. Mm, I got <sighs> I don't know what that noise was, but it was uh, apropos. Um, so, I don't know. There's a festival in Minneapolis. Do you see that? The no. Minneapolis Comedy Festival? Is that, is that a new Bob thing? Bob Newhart oh. uh, at the Target Center. Wow. And um, Wait, a how guy many named people John are... Christ. Do you Christ. know John Christ? No, I don't. C-R-I-S-T. He is a Christian comic. Uh huh. I believe he might. I'm uncertain. There are three headliners. Seth. Myers, maybe? Yes, the host, the late, the late, <laughs> late night. Familiar? Yeah. Am I pronouncing that right? Yes. Um, those are the three headliners, and they're even. John Christ, Bob Newhart, Seth Myers. What? Yeah. That is okay. wrong. There's all kinds of wrong, because they were just released. Did, didn't you see that we got tagged on Twitter? No. Uh, because the, they're, they just released their first poster. Yeah. And it was all dudes. Oh. Uh, those three and then four like duos and trios underneath it. Yeah. Uh, of, uh, a thousand, just a bunch of, uh, swinging dicks, just a bunch of dudes and some of them black. Wow. Who, who fucking, but who get this, no like Minnesotans, that right now. no Minnesotans at all. And there is a comedy festival in Minneapolis that's doing very good. I mean, it's, um, more Bridgetowny. You know that it's called Ten Thousand Lakes Comedy Club Comedy oh, Festival, okay. and uh, it's a good one. I think Cy Amundsen has something to do with it. I'm uncertain. Mm-hmm. I do know that um, that supposedly the people that own this comedy festival mm-hmm. go into towns that have comedy festivals like Bridgetown, and then try to usurp their audience. yeah, and they're like, oh, oh people like comedy. Let's do a one-off comedy festival with giant names and do a cash grab. And um, a, that's a business model. 
to right, right. Really? <laughs> yeah. You fucking can't think of anything else to do but throw your second comedy <laughs> festival in a town, right? Because I would love to see Bob Newhart do stand-up comedy. I fear what that would be at this late date. He's but... very sharp. He's done Conan recently. He's oh, very sharp. He? Oh, yeah. good. Yeah, mm-hmm. that's because I mean, he's yeah. he's great. Uh, I love all the sitcom stuff, and then the old albums. I heard a little bit. Oh, there he, he is. He uh, the Kyle's got up. the got the thing. He's gonna. Uh, but I don't know <laughs> what this is ridiculous. Those guys over George Lopez and- Wait, yeah. what? Well, okay, they're all in circles, right? John Christ is a circle. Bob Newhart, Seth Meyers. Now the left, lower left circle is George Lopez, Cedric, and D. L. Hughley. They're sharing a circle. They're sharing a circle. Yes, and then Rhett and Link. I don't know who they are. Nope. Musical comedy. Okay. Musical comedy? Now here's the thing. I will. I'll say this. I've never appreciated musical comedy <laughs> until I saw Eliza Skinner do it, and I'm like, oh, when you're funny, it it's doesn't different. Matter. No, there's very. You know, there's. I mean, the the. Oh my gosh, we, this is astonishing. It's astonishing. Uh, and the, you know what? I didn't look at the names of the bottom three circles, which is why I thought that T. L. Hughley was in a trio. Well, I'm so sorry. I was like, there's some black guys. I don't know anything about it. So a duo or a trio but they okay. have all the black performers sharing a circle and then two yeah two circles okay. of black performers and then uh three white guys up high wow and, uh, and one of them's new heart and one of them's new heart and the other two are fine well seth myers has a, has a tv show that's yeah. fine yeah i think he does i i think it's um he's probably going to I right mean, there <laughs> I'm pretty but it, sure he's about to. It's probably, you know what? I don't know how how personal he gets. I, I have no idea if he's out doing spots and stuff. But I mean, he does. He doesn't. He's done extended monologue type of performing okay. for you know over a decade between yeah. SNL and his show. So, uh, of course, it's different when you're just on stage. But I'm sure he can swing it. He can. He can maneuver the few degrees to the right or left or whatever that is for him right now i don't know when this will drop because it's all a blur now right but what upcoming gigs do you have laurie kilmartin (laughs) what do you have on the books oh that you're looking forward to possibly in april at the end let's see i think i've already done my santa cruz date when this goes down yes and then i'm gonna be in la i'll be in new york on april 20th uh, okay. hopefully doing spots all over the place mm-hmm, mm-hmm. and I'll be in, um, I'll be at Houston in Houston at the joke joint at the end of May. Check the calendar. I think okay. it's May 31st or something like that. Um, but what's that's, her face did her, did her Wednesday. Yeah. I mean the, re- I read and the live, uh, the I, I read daily the beast because they put my name in it, but, um, right. It, you know, it sounds like exactly what, it would. I thought would be, it would be. Right, it's just her be. storytelling. Just, yeah, whatever about stuff. I didn't notice that they had uh, put comics on the lineup with her. Did you read the whole thing? I did read the whole things, but I didn't see any names of the okay. comics. That so I don't know. I, I have no idea if she did or not. I right. will ask when I get there. I'm curious, mildly curious, but uh, <laughs> you know, she's that's already in the distance. Although. Right. Let me tell you something. There's a certain kind of male comic who was very excited by the interactions I had with her and was <sighs> <sighs> brings it up to me a lot. Oh, yeah. Uh, like a write couple down? of them. No, no, no. I don't even. It's right. just like, oh, that thing was. St-. I'm like, uh, OK, it's what it was. Twitter It's like five tweets. Write, write your own slash fan fiction of me and <laughs> me, me and someone, Stormy Daniels. Goes, you want me to bring you up with that as a. Cr-? I'm like, no, that's not a credit. Oh my god. <laughs> That's but insane. I'm telling you there's a there's a it's a girl on girl kind of fight that a yeah. guy can really get behind. Right. There's a certain type of gentleman who really wants to hear cat fight meow. Yeah. And you're like, stop it. Yeah. Wrap it up. It so, was something that happened for a heartbeat. Yeah. And now it's over. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. How, Kyle, please. <laughs> Fifty six. I will so when do you do you know when this one will drop, Kyle? Uh, Two weeks from now, what what do you think that date is? Where are you going to be? You'll be in Europe right now, right? But I'm hoping to give you an actual maybe a April eighth. Oh, that'll be early days. So um, the the I will say this is that April eighth I will be in Brussels. Nice. Wow. Uh, and then 
Right at eight and nine, I'm in Brussels, and then I travel to Poland on the tenth. Well, so we'll, we'll be sure to let everybody know. I'm hoping yeah, everybody get get some good work ins, but I'm I'm looking forward to the shows. I mean, it'll be it, it they're always really they're more fun than you think they're going to be. Not always, troops. Not always. No, no. I think they're so. not always. It's mostly guys. Yeah, it, that's not always a good combination. Men love me. I don't know how they uh, how, how you do with an entirely well, male audience. Well, you know, audience, you don't have uh, to. That's I. That doesn't mean men don't love me. <laughs> According yeah. to a magazine, I'm a six at least, I, I, except is, for my is, nose. Is, really, is this something? But, I I did you keep that magazine? By the way, I never want to I see kept this magazine it a long time. Way too long. Yeah. 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 Like that, I may have gone back home in my twenties and been like, I got to throw this thing away. But oh, yeah. Yeah. I know. I, I studied it. Like it, it was my, it was my Talmud. It was my Torah. <laughs> it was my everything. Oh my God. It was, it was your everything and, and it's created some problems. I'm outraged that my mother never stopped me. You should be, but not, it, but the thing is, is she's not alone. You no, know? it's true. I mean, there was, there was just a general hands off. A general hands, uh, a, a general sort of uh, vision from the television telling you that uh, all of us that we were never enough. Right. So, I'm so sorry that it had anything to do with your face. Oh, who cares? Fuck it. Yeah, and um, I know I was talking about something. Any idea what it was? This has been great, hasn't it? Have has everyone really enjoyed us meandering around the big questions? And we're at an hour. Right. So let's start See you again. next week. Maximumfun.org. Comedy and culture. Artist owned. Audience supported.